Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Love Love Tuts, and today we're going to be getting into some more data binding with Polymer. What we're going to be doing is using an array of objects. We're going to be iterating over those objects all with inside of our custom element. So check it out. We're going to get started right now. So in the last video, we started with some very basic data binding where we just had the name attribute get passed in and then output into our H1 with this hello name. So now we're going to experiment a little bit more with data binding, maybe with some more complex things. Uh, not too complex though, we're just going to be getting into iterating over objects and things like that. So to get started, we actually want to modify this script. In fact, right now we're just sort of saying uh, the name variable is equal to world by default. But what we want to do is say when Polymer is ready, as when, when Polymer is loaded, we want to load in some data. So to do that, we actually need to make some modifications. First thing is we want to pass in the name of our new element into our Polymer function here. So we can do that in a string just after the first parenthesis before the curly bracket. So we can say hello hyphen world with the name of our attribute and then comma and then our first curly bracket. Now inside of here, we can actually have a ready function. So we can type ready colon and then function and then inside of this function is where we're going to be setting some of our variables up. Now we want name to be this dot name and we want to change this colon to n equals. So now this dot name is going to be equal to world just like that. So if we refresh our page, we'll see that it now says hello world just as it did before. Okay, well this is nothing earth shattering, it's just pretty much of the same. However, it is getting our element ready for some more complex things. And let's make names into an array of objects. So we can say, uh, let's make this into an array here. And now we're going to have objects with a name and then a specific name. Let's close that out and let's add a couple more of these. So we now have just an array of objects. Even though there's only one thing in this object here, I did it this way that we could uh, open it up in case we wanted to add more things. So now our hello name is not going to work because we have this array of names. And now we need to iterate over this list of names. So we can do that inside of our template using a template tag. So to illustrate this, I'm actually going to turn this h1 into a list item because this is going to be a list of names now. And uh, I'll start off with an open and closing UL here. Okay, so now we need to iterate over these list items. To do that, we're going to use a template tag. So we can say template. And this template tag is going to wrap around the item we want iterated over. And now to actually have that function like how we would expect, we're going to be using repeat. So it's going to say repeat equals and then inside of quotes here and inside of brackets, double brackets like we've been using, we can now say name in names. So this is taking the name array and then spitting out a name for each one. So now our hello name is still not going to work because we're going to say name.name .name to access the name item within this object. So let's save this and let's check out our code. Let's refresh. We now have hello world, hello Scott, and hello Ben. So as you can see, we're now doing a little bit here more with JavaScript. We're using the ready function to load up our data on ready and then iterate it with our template. And if you want to check out what the DOM looks like because we have this template repeat, let's go ahead and do that while we're here. I'm going to inspect this. And as you can see, it's not actually wrapping this template. This template tag sort of sits on top of things. So we have the UL then this template tag, which is set to display none, it's not going to show up anything. And then we have each of our list items below that. So we don't have anything weird with the, the DOM structure where we have a template tag wrapping these list items in any way uh, that just sort of sits on top there. Okay, so that's some really basic data binding. Like I said, we're moving kind of slow and we're just sort of adding little things here and there. In the next video, we're going to show you how to have dynamic two-way data binding in a way that's really super easy. 
And we're going to introduce to you some basic declarative binding of events so we can handle a click event in the next video. And after that, we're going to start exploring the custom core polymer elements. Once we get into those, it's going to be a lot of fun to see how those are built and the capabilities of what they're all doing so that we can build more complex elements ourselves. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Facebook or Twitter at Level Up Tuts. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.